Hi, this is Keith Schneider, CEO of MarketGage.com, and this is January 25th edition of Market Outlook. So this week, coinciding with the economic forum in Davos, uh, some bad economic news, the market took one of its largest drops in a couple-day period since about a year. So that's interesting, and certainly we breached some fairly important levels. And let's see what the markets are telling us right now. Well, a couple things. Looking at the longer-term channel line here, you can see in the S&P, we actually basically topped out right at the top of the channel. So it's not surprising. Now, coincidentally... Let's take a look at a couple other things like volume patterns, uh, RSI, and how that compares to the Qs as well. Well, please note that distribution days, what I call a true distribution day, is where the uh, down volume on a down day exceeds the prior day's volume. And it also, for really good confirmation, should be greater than at least a 50-day average of volume. And in the spiders, that's about 100 million shares, as you can see down here. So one thing you can see that even as we were so, sort of going sideways here, the action in the markets uh, showed that there was distribution days as opposed to accumulation days. And in fact, none of the up days had greater volume than the normal average. So we've got one, two, three, four distribution days um, over the last several weeks, which is definitely a sign of caution and a, uh, a component of a sell signal. Other thing to note, right, top of the channel, we also broke down beneath the 50-day moving average. Now it's still rising sharply, so this is what I would call a weak warning phase. But this is the first time that we've been under the 50-day moving average in about three or four months. So we have to see how far this can go uh, to the downside. Obviously, you're going to see some support around the 200-day moving average, which was somewhere around 170 to the 171 area. So a lot of evidence le leading up to this overbought condition up here, uh, couldn't really make new highs at all in uh, 2014 as compared to 2013 on the close where it closed on the highs. So the other thing is we'll, we'll show you also some calendar range material. So again, um, overall longer term uptrend still intact. Again, we're above that 200 day, but we're definitely looking like we're in correction mode here. Um, let's take a look at the um, Qs. Qs are looking a little bit different. Qs are still holding above its 50-day moving average, which is rising sharply. So, a uh, little mixed bag. Uh, NASDAQ stocks clearly outperforming here. We actually made new highs uh, for the year and for, um, gee, probably the last 12 or 13. And... Um, obviously promptly the sell-off uh, we got a nice sell-off here that was a good two percent move on friday alone so critical levels to watch here to really see a confirmed move or you know a longer term type correction the 50-day moving average which comes in around 86 and the low of uh 2013 here right uh, excuse me, low on the 13th is the low in NASDAQ since the beginning of the year. So uh, on, uh, let's see, this price right here, probably around 80, well, let's get a, really close, uh, a close here under the 85.50 or 70 level is um, going to be really a confirmed breakdown both on calendar ranges, a break of the 50-day moving average, and uh, that this critical two-week consolidation that occurred, um, which we call that uh, January uh, to July calendar range effect. So, so far, NASDAQ 
still intact, uh, bullish phase intact, so mixed bag between the spiders and the NASDAQ. Obviously, the confirmation by NASDAQ clearing that 50 and closing under it, as well as taking out the calendar range, will be a reason for a greater concern. But that is really what we're talking about in terms of confirmation. Okay, so that covers the spiders, the cues. Let's take a look at some of the market indicators uh, and market internals. McClellan Oscillator, as you know, there was a sell signal back in uh, mid-December, um, sort of just working sideways. And of course, now we've got plenty room on the downside for this to continue to play out. Now, on a shorter term basis, you know, we look at the advanced decline and the up-down volume. We like to see both of them get into overbought readings. Uh, they both did and then confirm within a week of one another, which occurred. That occurred um, ooh, about seven or eight days ago. Market worked its way sideways, and we're still basically on a sell signal in uh, the S&P and the broad market uh, on a shorter term basis. And there is plenty more room on the downside. Let's take a look at the, uh, the VIX. Also interesting. Um, VIX clearly, this is the highest level it's been since uh, mid-October. We now are trading well above the 50 and the 200 day moving average. Um, we blew through that on Thursday and then confirmed again here uh, massively on Friday, 31% huh, increase in price, really good size move. Obviously, we're getting a little bit over overbought here potentially, so um, let's see what happens. I just want to go back and look at the spiders here um, in terms of uh, how overbought or oversold they are on the RSI. And we are getting a bit um, overdone on the RSI. 2.7 is pretty low. We look for the threshold of 3. So, interesting. Uh, this massive sell-off in just a couple of days is basically getting us to the point where we're getting pretty pretty uh, damn rich uh, on the downside momentum on a very short-term basis. So, that's um, a little bit more of a positive that um, that might have been a little bit excessive, but of course the action will prove out which way um, this is going to play out. And so far the evidence um, is still stronger that the correction could continue, certainly in the S&Ps. Now let's take a look at bonds. Um, we had pointed out one of our favorite slingshot patterns uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, the last time we did Market Outlook. And as you can see, we've sort of bottomed out here. We made all-time new lows, closed in the upper part of the range. The same thing for the following couple days, inside days. And this has matured into a very nice size rally, suggesting that the down move and the taper um, is uh, potentially on pause. Now, taking a look um, at the, well, I want to put up a monthly chart here. Uh, let's go to, no, that's not it. Let's take a look at a monthly chart. And be there with, in one second. And on the monthly chart, you can see we sort of held this critical level here. I'm going to also uh, put in a 80-month moving average. And So one of the things that we pointed out over the last couple of weeks is that we were holding this critical 80-month moving average, which is the super long-term average for bonds. So overall, we held at a very critical level. This green line is the 80-month. Uh, you can see that the daily chart 
sketched out a uh, slingshot key reversal pattern where it made new all-time lows. Um, going back here, you know, this is a, a multi-year low and basically held. And now we've taken out the 50-day moving average and actually have turned up. So this is a pretty interesting confirmation. Obviously, our uh, first line of uh, resistance is going to be coinciding with these highs here around 109, which also coincides with the 200-day uh, moving average, which seems to come in around 108.50. So uh, 108.50, 109 should be uh, some point to contend with. But if we can get through there, you sort of have this compound bottom, which is interesting. That would confirm China slowing, some uh, other uh, interesting uh, economic data out pointing to things are not moving as fast globally as expected, and that definitely is going to put a pause on further tapering if that trend continues. Let's take a look at gold as well. Similar pattern in gold that's been traced out by bonds, not surprising about the relationship between interest rates and gold, but you can see very, very similar. We basically touched the lows, had a key reversal or a slingshot pattern right at the lows in here, and not running quite as strong as the bonds. Um, we still have a declining 50-day moving average. We are trading above it. Would really like to see that thing turn. And of course, we have this sort of pivotal point here, which is above the uh, 123 uh, 20 mark to keep an eye on. So overall, a uh, bottom pattern potentially tracing out here in gold, which would be quite interesting, right? Thing that was most out of favor last year, sort of coming back alive this year. So between bonds, gold, uh, the sell-off in, in stocks, um, not surprising. Actually, these relationships seem to be playing out uh, fairly consistently with, uh, you know, uh, overall macroeconomic uh, concepts. But uh, th the thing that is curious that normally uh, lower rates would spur a rally uh, in the market is not playing out as economic contraction is even more critical. Okay, I hope that helps. Um, see you back here uh, next week. And don't forget to sign up for this newsletter. Uh, the video newsletter and the text part at www.marketgauge.com. And also, if you haven't seen our recent uh, new trading product uh, called ETF Sector Plus, please check it out. Uh, it's a great product, and it seeks to capitalize both on up and down markets uh, across various sectors, which also includes the ability to take advantage of the market for downside moves um, when sectors are out of favor in general and the market is under pressure. That's it. Bye for now. Good luck trading next week.